left as possible. Aaron Abani on his way. Uh, he's way down on the end of the track, coming to the right flag. Dale Jarrett wins. Well, he should have just whoa, oh. it crashed. Oh. It was the final season of the century, and it provided plenty of memories for all of us to take with us into the next century. In 1999, the NASCAR Winston Cup Series was bigger and better than ever. Of course, we expected that, and we saw it all season long. Welcome to the 1999 NASCAR Winston Cup Year in Review. Now relax and enjoy as we go racing one more time in 1999 and celebrate the final season of the millennium. Just like every season, our journey starts at the beach. Not just a beach, but the most famous beach in the world, Daytona Beach, Florida. After two and a half productive months of building, testing, and not so patiently waiting for the start of NASCAR's 51st season, the stars and cars of the Winston Cup Series finally took the green flag to begin the 1999 season at the Daytona International Speedway in what is still recognized as the most prestigious and certainly the most important race of the year, the Daytona 500. This is a heart-pumping, fan-cheering, foot-to-the-floor restrictor plate race that puts driver and car on the edge in a tightly packed high-speed traffic jam. It's a blur of color and charisma, a spectacular way to begin a spectacular season. Daytona is a two and a half mile track and on this daring stage on the sport's biggest day, the spotlight was stolen by the sport's biggest names. 1989 Winston Cup champion Rusty Wallace was celebrating the 10th anniversary of his title winning season. But Wallace had never celebrated a win in the 500 or even a win at Daytona. In fact, Wallace entered the season without a win in a restrictor plate race. But it looked like this could finally be Rusty's day at Daytona. His Miller Lite Ford dominated the day, leading 104 of the race's 200 laps. But when Bobby Hamilton brought out the yellow flag with 25 to go, Rusty gambled. Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon both pitted for fresh tires, while Wallace elected to stay out and protect his lead. With only 10 laps remaining and Wallace still at the point, the lead pack ran up on the lapped and limping car of Ricky Rudd, opening the door for a daring move by Gordon to take the lead, followed closely by Earnhardt. Yeah. Welcome back for the lead. This is going to get excited. He looks inside. He goes outside. He looks inside again. Here comes Earnhardt. He's all the way to the bottom, almost in the grass. He slides up the racetrack, and Jeff Gordon will win it. The Intimidator's desperate dash was not enough, though, as Gordon held on for his second Daytona 500 win in three years. <laughs> the competition had been warned at the earliest possible moment. The 1998 Winston Cup champion was picking up right where he left off in victory lane. Yeah, well, Dale's pretty strong up off the bottom, and, uh, you know, Jeff did a great job driving the car. Car wasn't the quickest car all day, but he did a great job driving it. Jeff, those last 10 laps, what a race. That is a dream come true for me, to race Dale Earnhardt down to the final uh, finish, uh, all the way down the line for the Daytona 500. It does not get any better than that. You could hear the groans coming from the garage area. The kid was at it again. Not only did Jeff Gordon win the race, denying Rusty Wallace with that daring move and beating Dale Earnhardt, he added the glamour of starting the season by taking the first million of the Winston Noble bonus program. Now, only Cale Yarborough had won three consecutive NASCAR Winston Cup championships. Gordon was hoping to tie that record. And the way he ran at Daytona, he was off to a pretty good start. But the next two races had fans talking about a Jeff and Jeff show. In Atlanta, the lead story was rain. Finally, after an hour and a half weather delay, it was business as usual for Jeff Gordon. The Rainbow Warrior passed pole sitter Bobby Labonte with 21 laps to go and never looked back for his second win of the season after just four races. Jeff Gordon wins the Cracker Barrel 500 at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Another victory.
victory for Jeff Gordon and the Rainbow Warriors. Jeff Gordon was born in California in 1971. In the racing era, that was during the legendary years of the King and the Silver Fox. In 1997, he returned to California and christened Roger Penske's new two-mile palace with a skillful, slick inaugural victory. In 1999, Gordon returned to his home state looking for some momentum, or shall we say a little home cooking. He came into the race with two wins in the first nine races and was fifth in points, 210 behind Jeff Burton. But Gordon's normal golden string of finishes had been tarnished early in the season. He had six top six finishes, but in the other three races of the year, the defending series champion had finished 39th, 43rd, and the wreck at Talladega left him 38th. Gordon was not considered a favorite heading into the California 500, but he started fifth, and when he finished, the only thing you could call him was the winner. Gordon ended his springtime slump by stopping the competition in the California 500. He worked his way to the front and led 86 of the race's final 87 laps. The 24 car's blistering pace left second place Jeff Burton trailing by almost five seconds. It was Gordon's third win of a still young season, but he only picked up 10 points on Burton and remained fourth in the standings. 200 out of the lead. Jeff Gordon records his 45th victory and 34th on a super speedway. After the first 10 races of the 1999 NASCAR Winston Cup season, the notes show there were two big storylines for the fans to follow. The Jeff and Jeff show and the Dale and Dale show. Jeff Gordon had three big wins, but he also had struggled in three big races. In 1999, there were 34 races on the NASCAR Winston Cup schedule, but only two were road course events. Watkins Glen, New York, and of course the first one on the Sears Point Raceway in Sonoma, California. These are challenging racetracks. Right turns, left turns, but no turning back. You've still got to race them, whether you love road course racing or hate it. Jeff Gordon swept both road course races in 1998 and had posted three straight road course wins when he arrived at Sears Point in June. He was suffering from laryngitis, so he let his race car do the talking. Now early in the race, there was plenty of action up front. Drivers were given water during the delay, and then the race was restarted. Jeff Gordon had started from the pole and led three different times. The DuPont Chevrolet held off Mark Martin on a late race restart, and Gordon was once again king of the road. And here comes Jeff Gordon to take the checkered flag and win the St. Mark Ray 350 at Sears Point. His fourth road course win, the fourth win of 1999. He also won the Daytona, Atlanta, and California. Of course, there were two road course races on the 1999 NASCAR Winston Cup schedule. The second one was in upstate New York at Watkins Glen. But Jeff Gordon was riding the hottest road course streak in Winston Cup history. He won his fifth consecutive road course race and his third straight at the Glen. Jeff, uh, three in a row here, but five in a row on road courses. What a record. Oh man, that's amazing. I tell you what, uh, this team has just come so well prepared for uh, these road courses and uh, you know we've just worked and worked and worked on getting better and I, I guess that test we uh, did up here Watkins Glen definitely paid off. Uh, I hate I didn't get the pole because I thought we were capable of doing that too, but uh, I'd rather settle for this win. It was, a, it was a great run for us. Man, the car was strong, and uh, I was having a lot of fun, especially battling with Ron Fellows. I mean, there's no better guy to, to race on a road course than him, and I didn't think I could hold him off. He was catching me in some places, and I just stayed after, tried not to make any mistakes, and uh, started pulling back away from him. But the biggest news was what was happening elsewhere in the garage, where a dynasty was breaking up. The rumors had swirled for a year, but by September of 1999, the rumors had become official. Ray Evernham, the crew chief for all 47 of Jeff Gordon's Winston Cup wins and all three of Gordon's Winston Cup championships, was leaving Hendrick Motorsports. The driver turned mechanic from New Jersey had been paired with Gordon since their Bush Grand National days back in the early 90s. Over nearly a decade of winning, the two had become inseparable, both on and off the track. In the process, Evernham had molded a reckless young sprint car driver into an adult stock car legend. After the MBNA Gold 400 at Dover, Evernham announced that he was leaving to head up Chrysler's return to Winston Cup Racing 
for the 2001 season. Team engineer Brian Weitzel, Everett Ham's right hand for all three championships, would be Gordon's new coach. Ray Everham had always said he received more than his fair share of credit for Jeff Gordon's success. Now that the breakup was official, all eyes were on the Rainbow Warriors to see how they fared in the post-Ray era. By the closing laps at Martinsville, it was the DuPont Chevy back in a familiar position, running up front. With 25 laps to go, the leaders came in under yellow for fresh tires. But Brian Weitzel, the new leader of the Rainbow Warriors, told his driver to stay out and gain track position. Besides, Gordon's car was no good on new tires. Old tires were the only chance they had of winning. Weitzel's first big gamble paid off. Dale Earnhardt closed the gap lap after lap as the race built to a dramatic finish. But Gordon held on for his 48th career win and his first win ever without Ray Evernham. Jeff Gordon winning the Napa Auto Care 500 at Martinsville. We are perhaps seeing the beginning of another reign here as Brian Weitzel leads his driver, Jeff Gordon, to victory in their first togetherness. Bill. Well, you cannot imagine the emotion here. There's Brian Weitzel. Jeff's a fourth by New Crucci. Jeff had tears in his eyes, a big handshake from John Hendrick. Congratulations, my friend. What a day. I just want to thank God. Uh, there, there's no way that this was possible without God. Uh, and, uh, it wasn't possible without Ray Evernham too. I mean, he's the one that orchestrated these guys, and that's the reason why we have this awesome race team. Uh, so proud of these guys. Brian Weitzel led these guys this weekend like he was a veteran, and uh, man, I've never wanted to win so bad in my life. I <laughs> After a washout on Sunday, the 43 Winston Cup engines finally roared to life on Monday at the Lowe's Motor Speedway. Pole sitter Bobby Labonte set the pace early and for most of the afternoon. The green interstate batteries machine led 136 laps. Hot on his heels sat Jeff Gordon and Mike Skinner. He was hungry for his first Winston Cup win. During the last round of pit stops, Gordon pulled one over on Skinner blocking the entrance to Mike's pit stall. And look, Skinner had to put the brakes on because Gordon is pitting further down. Pit then the Rainbow then Warrior Skinner pulled one over Skinner on the rest of the field. A three-car duel between Gordon, Skinner, and Labonte ensued. When Bobby got caught up in lap traffic, he lost time, tire rubber, and his shot at the win. Gordon grabbed his first ever fall win at Charlotte and his first win with car owner Rick Hendrick in attendance since Hendrick was diagnosed with leukemia in 1997. Crew chief Brian Weitzel was undefeated 2-0. But Jeff Gordon's seven-win season ended on a disappointing note when his engine expired. After back-to-back -back championships, he finished sixth in the points. Bill Weber, what do you know? Uh, he's still talking to the crew, but he blew up. Mm. Wow. The 1999 NASCAR Winston Cup season began with a new leader when it was announced that Mike Helton would follow in the footsteps of Bill France Jr. It ended with a new champion, Dale Jarrett, following in the footsteps of his famous father, Ned. And now we look ahead to the new season, the year 2000, and plenty of stories to build on. Can Dale Jarrett repeat the reemergence of Jeff Gordon in the final third of the season without Ray Evernham with new crew chief Robbie Loomis?